Snow is still falling as I step outside, and though the hour is late, there's certainly no peaceful quiet in Lunaris tonight. The streets outside of headquarters are bustling with hunters, enforcers, and everything in between. Sorry, but there's only two genders, hunters and enforcers. I keep my head down as I make my way towards the wolf. I, will, I fall into a trance as I replay my conversation with Harry over and over, trying to pinpoint the exact moment that made him change his attitude so drastically. Me too! What did- hang on! <laughs> <laughs> I love you going back to the history to try to I figure it out! I don't understand! I don't understand! We talked about your dead husband, and then you showed me a picture and a face with the name and the twins, and was it- uh, why did you ask me about the twins? Festival, Adamant, and Fad, did you speak to the twins? Hmm. I don't know what I did. You spoke to the twins, yeah. like, way back. Yeah, I know when we spoke to the twins. I'm just trying to figure out why that upset him that I talked about it. I'm snapped back to reality when I bump into something cold and hard. I knew it! I knew it! I was like, cold and hard sounds like a vampire. Finding a pair of familiar golden eyes staring back at me when I look up. <laughs> Hi! Hi! <laughs> I have to remember his face! I don't remember Finn's voice. You do? I don't, I don't, I don't at all. Okay. I- What is it? Sarah, distracted, are we? Nice, yeah, it was like aristocratic. I- I- Yeah, I am distracted. <laughs> I step back, brushing down the front of my coat. I can see that his lips are on the cusp of curling into a- in, blah, 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 of, cor of curling to the side in a vaguely amused smirk. Them fangs, though. You could say that. It's been a long night. He offers me a sympathetic look, shoving his hands firmly into his coat pockets as a duo of enforcers pass by. They make a point to glare at him and by proxy at me for being near him. Shut up! Finn dutifully avoids their gazes like a man who has had centuries to perfect feigning indifference to the way people like me treat him and his kind. I can imagine. I'm glad to see you safe, Sarah. We were all worried for you when we heard. Thank you, Finn. He turns to check that the street is now clear, turning back to me with a serious look. I have my clan patrolling the woods. I'll ensure they're out until dawn searching if necessary. Heck yes, we gotta team up with the vampire clan. A team of vampires. Anything we can help can do to help find whatever or whoever is doing this. Thank you, Finn. King, I'm grateful for the assistance, and I certainly King can't shit. say I certainly can't say I've ever had a clan of vampires as allies before. I'm optimistic that their help will be of great value to me, to us. That's very kind. After an indecipherable pause, Finn's expression drifts somewhere far away. You know, I was out there just now. I picked up a scent. Something familiar. Hope it wasn't that vampire I killed. Familiar how? He steps closer, and there's a certain air of caution in the way he addresses me, as if he's unsure that we're truly alone. Ooh. Well, there's the ghost in my head. I didn't get to hang around. There were too many enforcers, but... The blood on that stone we found in the graveyard at the scene of... Oh, 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 oh! A pause, apprehension, clouding the way he looks at me. His next words are glum, as dead as his demeanor. Ooh. Hunter Lane's death. <gasps> He's testing the waters. If the way he holds my stare is anything to go by. Waiting to see just how clued in I am. I know about him, Finn. I spoke to Harry just now. He might be a vampire, but the look that crosses his face momentarily isn't exactly subtle. He casts his eyes away from me, the frown that settled on his brow softening around the edges. He licks one of his fangs, thinking of the forlornness, forlornness that suits him a little too well. I see. What's up? What, what does that mean? And how did that go? I shrug, because I can't really offer him anything else. I feel deflated, defeated. Not great. He's in mourning, and I don't think he's, the, he's in the right mind to be making decisions. Then purses his lips, contemplating my statement. That's a bold way to speak of your lieutenant general, but I don't doubt your instincts. Yeah. Then, a pause. I've lost loved ones, and it's never easy. 
The mind needs time to heal after such trauma, and all Harry is doing is delaying his grief. That's sad. Everything's sad. You're all sad. Eventually, he throws me a half-hearted smile, but I sense it's something pitiful rather than friendly. I suspect my frustration with my current predicament is glaringly obvious without him having to read my thoughts. I'm sorry you've been kept so in the dark. I sense that you're frustrated, and I don't blame you. Yeah! As much as I may not agree with certain information being withheld, it's truly for your safety. Why do you know so much, Mr. Finn? It's funny He's because been around everyone. A second. I know, but still, it's funny because everyone keeps saying such things, but it certainly doesn't feel like anything other than sheer avoidance. He removes a hand from his pocket, running long fingers through his hair with a knowing exhale. Yes, well, I cannot excuse anyone else's behavior, but I can apologize for my own. Come by the catacombs when you get the chance. I have some things we can discuss that may help. Heck yeah. yeah just come this... down the underground passageways that run through the entire city. Hey, You'll just hop the in the one. sewer. You know hop the tunnel? in the sewer. Come hop to my in the tunnel. sewer. Hop in the sewer. Though spending some time underground a tomb sounds less than appealing, Finn doesn't look like the kind of man who lives in squalor. Plus, any information is valued, and Finn has lived here long enough to know the ins and outs of this strange little town. Thank you. I'll take you up on that as soon as I can. Why can't we do it literally right now? He tips his head, encouraging me to follow him towards the wolf, I assume. Come on, I'll walk you home. Home. I am eager to get inside, and with a few strides I catch up to him, falling in step. I don't require an escort, you know? Everyone seems so set on ensuring I'm safe, but you all seem to be forgetting I was brought here to save the day. Supposedly. He purses his lips in an obvious attempt to stop himself from laughing, and I watch the bob of his throat as he swallows the noise. I'm well aware that you require no assistance, but just think about the hunters that were killed. <laughs> You're slipping into Harry a little bit, but that's fine. It's okay, they have a similar vibe. <laughs> they both have strong chins. Yeah. That means they're the same. Yeah. They were of your caliber, your rank. The best of the best, as the darling enforcers love to say. The darling enforcers? Listen, the thought of you ending up like them is not a pleasant one, Sarah. Aww. We may not have known you for very long, but we don't want to see you get hurt. I'm the favorite. He has a point, You're I like suppose. A favorite. I'm the favorite. You're the favorite. Very, <laughs> very well, but no coddling, understand? Can I do the baby voice? Can you do the baby voice? Can I? I was just saying, I, I no coddling, but can we do baby voice? <laughs> yes, general. General. He laughs again when he catches sight of the dramatic roll of my eyes, sidestepping with startling grace to avoid the elbow that I launched towards his ribcage. We walk quietly through the streets, the cobblestones glistening with frost. The moon is full and hangs low in the sky as it always seems to here in Lunaris, and Finn exhales sharply to break the silence. I glance at him, too tired to ask him any of the hundreds of questions that run through my mind. I think he knows, somehow, for he too seems to have something on the tip of his tongue. We stop outside the wolf, the lantern that hangs above the door dark thanks to the late hour. I glance up at the now familiar sign, a scrappy looking white wolf howling at a full moon, and I laugh. Finn leans against the mismatched brick and stares at me quite intently, his eyes unnervingly bright in the glowing darkness. What's funny? Everything. You're all masters at being painfully cryptic, and yet, I feel at home. But I shouldn't trust a single bloody one of you, should I? He turns, checking we're alone again before he leans a little closer, his voice low. That's for you to decide. I choose to trust you all. I'm going to die. <laughs> no, tell me, Hunter. What does that tricky little gut of yours tell you about this? About us? Don't talk about my gut. What do you feel? I feel... Can't you just read Ooh. my mind, bitch? Uh, I feel like I should leave. Yo, Bye. Edward. Cullen, sir. Edward Cullen, sir. Just, just take a peek. I find myself getting lost in molten gold, watching him watch me, a witty response turning to ash upon my tongue. Watching to him. Shut up. Watching me. Shut up. Watching him, watching me, sweet fan again. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> I had, we haven't touched that one in a while. I felt like I needed no, to bring it back. 
I try to search his face for a clue about what he seeks, but I come up short. I feel that I should be doing anything other than talking to strange vampires in the snow at this early hour. And yet here you are. Here I am. I sigh, joining him and leaning against the wall, my breath turning to mist against the cold air. Here I am. I wish I knew what it was what it was about him that draws me in. I can tell you two things. One, <laughs> two. Besides the obvious okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the main two By things are the titties. Yes. By all accounts, I should be overly cautious around such a creature, but Finn makes me more at ease than I thought possible. One and two. <laughs> and I need that tonight more tonight more than ever. I want to get to know him, to understand why my heart pounds so feverishly whenever he's near. I should head inside. My words sound dull, and I know I don't mean them. I'm looking for a reason to stay right here, anchored in this spot. You sound positively enthused. Oh, I'm fucking over the moon. Hmm? I shrug, sparing the old door of the tavern a glance. The sheets are scratchy. I'm just psyching myself up. That's fair. Aww. After a very brief pause, he quickly steals his gaze. He reaches out and runs a cool iron finger along the curve of my cheekbone. The etching is lighting up in the darkness. <laughs> You're quite lovely, you know. I know. I cannot resist the impulse to tip my head in blatant invitation the way wolves sh the way wolves show submission, bearing the column of my throat to a man that could rip it out in the blink of an eye. Are you biting your lip? Sir, release that. His cool digits stop. He's doing it plate. really carefully so that his fangs aren't coming yeah, out, so which is, I think, the funniest mm -hmm. part of it. His cool digit stops over the place where my pulse thrums furiously, and I no longer care that he can hear, that he knows what he's doing to me. He smells strangely like a dying summer, though. I suspect his memories of sunshine are long dead. Sweet dreams, fair hunter. I daren't keep you from your rest much longer. My traitorous body shivers under his touch, and I mourn the loss of it when he finally pulls away. He quickly stuffs his hands back into his coat pockets as if the temptation would be too much if he didn't. I take a deep breath and try to gather my wits. I can't seem to find it in me to mind. He smiles at that, and I sense reluctance as he pushes away from the wall, ready to depart. Alas, you have a town to save. Plus, the night is still young for a creature like myself. I want it to be young for me, too. I sigh, staying closer than is probably necessary, craving contact of any kind as I watch his grin grow wider, wider still. I'm just a bitch who needs a hug, right? <laughs> I'm just, just a bitch who needs a hug. Just give me a big ol' squeeze, that's all I need. Right. I really should head inside, though, I suppose. A pleasure, as always. And remember, we've got your back. Should we find anything of interest overnight, I'll come running. I'll come running. Daylight permitting, of course. Good night, Sarah. Night, Finn. Even though you're not going to sleep, I return a smile, pushing the heavy door to the wolf open and praying it doesn't creak and wake the other residents. Good night, Finn. Bye, Finn. I watch him go before I close the door, only the light of the moon guiding his way as he disappears into the darkness. I finally settle upon the hard mattress, the cheap sheets harsh against my skin as I attempt to get comfortable. Light from the low-hanging moon bleeds into my room, bright enough to keep me awake as it cuts through my sorry excuse for curtains. I've scrubbed myself clean of any traces of grime from the hunt, and I can't help but feel irritated from the sheer lack of progress I've made so far. I come to the conclusion that there are too many secret keepers in this town, and I refuse to feel defeated or to let it continue. Overwhelmed by the day's events, I find myself falling into a swift and dreamless sleep. Good night. Good night. Reality settles over me when I awake, a thick smog that almost suffocates me as I reluctantly drag myself from the almost comfort of my bed. I haven't had anywhere near enough rest, but I must relent. I must have the energy to dress and head downstairs to face whatever obstacles are hastily and inevitably shoved in my way. And we're back. And no we're sooner have back. Night. And we're back. It's now finally daylight. How long has it been dark? All of the time. Because it's been two months, I think, since we've been when in When the night comes, game. it That's stays. That's true. It is when the night comes. It it don't go. It stays. That's what the sequel should be called. When the night comes, it stays. 
When the night comes, <laughs> it stays. Those games do hear us. When the night comes, it stays. I won't even charge you for that we one. We won't charge you because it's not no worth it. You can just call it it stays and we'll know. No sooner have my eyes taken in the bleary sight of the empty tavern than a hideous scraping of wood against stone assaults my ears. Who's assaulting my ears? In a corner of the room where he had until where he had until then sat in the shadows. I knew it was you! <laughs> Alcar stumbles to his feet. The chair he's been sitting on almost toppling over. I knew it was you. I knew it was you. He catches it at the last moment and sets it right, then grimaces briefly before stalking over. I love over the character in that moment. I choose to believe that he just sat there all night and waited for me to wake up. That checks. There's enough distance and enough time to see the hunch of his shoulders and the stiffness of his posture. For a moment, I wonder, worry, if he's hurt somehow. But as he comes closer, it seems more likely that he's only... wary, perhaps? Not unusual, but with the commotion last night, it puts me ill at ease. Great. I have no need for supernatural senses to know this is going to be another pebble on the mountain of mysteries. Yay! Alcar looks a mess, his feet unwrapped and covered in dirt, his clothes not much better. What has he been doing? Rolling around on the forest floor? Probably. <coughs> My God, what's his voice? I know it, it was. I, the, it was. It's Scottish, but I can't yeah. remember how to do a Scottish accent. Like a like a uh, Scott. Do you need to go watch some YouTube I videos? Do, I'm. I'm gonna pause it and go watch some YouTube videos now. Okay. Okay. Hunter, I need to speak with you. That's good. He doesn't sound like the aloof, cocky half lichen I've come to know. Alcar speaks forcefully, but there's a tremor in his voice that's hard to miss. He sounds frantic almost. What's wrong? What's wrong, babe? <laughs> we got art. The frown deepens. Instead of explaining himself, Algar holds out his hand and uncurls his fingers, revealing a crumpled ball of fabric. You are so handsome. <laughs> Woo! For a moment, I stare at him and at the thing he's holding without comprehension. Algar stares back, expression telling me he thinks I'm an idiot for not getting it, and I almost want to snap. But then I realized the distinctive purple, oh boy, oh boy, under the dirt and the dried crusted blood and my stomach drops. A hunter's sash. Algar is holding a hunter's sash in his hand. Or what's left of it. The thing is torn to a sorry state, its original color almost indistinguishable under the grime. Carefully, I reach out to take it from him for closer inspection. Where did you find this? He looks down. Where did you find this? Where did you find this? It doesn't belong to the hunter that was killed last night. Well, then where did you find this? Oh, God. What's his voice sound like? It doesn't belong to any of them. It's... Not the light. The smell. Oh. 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 Do we have an imposter? I stare at him in disbelief, shaking my head as I feel the gritty fabric beneath my fingers. Then who does it belong to? Alcar shrugs half-heartedly. In the tavern's uncertain light, his face is drawn, his eyes sunken. Exhausted, I realize, but his tail flicks back and forth, back and forth. Impatience or agitation? It's hard to tell with him. All I know is that Alcar is telling the truth, if for no other reason than because he's too worn out for deception. He's too tired. <laughs> he's too sweepy to lie to me. Too sweepy to lie to you. Aww. Okay, read this line so I can talk about it. I tried, but... Wow. Just, just do it! Just power through! I don't I care! I tried, but I couldn't tell. I searched all night with the clan, but we came up short. So we've got the vampire clan, the werewolf clan... There is no werewolf clan. He went with the vampire well, clan. Oh, he went with the clan, sorry. We got no, the you're werewolf, good. I was just... we got the vampire clan, we got the hunter... Everybody likes me. <laughs> Everybody wants to be my friend to help me out. He looks over his shoulder, checking to ensure we don't have company. I have to be careful. I can't be seen with such things, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. A sharp exhale, and he admits defeat, shoulders drooping, ears flat against his head. There's as much bitter resentment- ah! I think we should just stop sharing. No! There's as much bitter resentment in his voice as there is sulk. Oh, Poor puppy. They'll lie to me again. No! I don't, fuck he's, it. He's still- he's- uh... I almost ask who, but Alcar's hand twitches towards his chest, drawing my eyes to the hidden brand that I know is there, making the unpleasant implication clear. I would his literally little face. His little, his little face. Puppy dog eyes. His little baby face. 
I raise an eyebrow at him even as I very carefully pocket the piece of evidence. I haven't forgotten the brief conversation with Finn in the graveyard about the strange smelling blood. This feels like a vague but worthwhile puzzle piece. And despite himself, Alcar delivered it to me. Me, a stranger, and a hunter at that. Probably precisely because I'm a stranger. God's knows he's probably... God's knows, God knows he probably doesn't trust any of my colleagues in this town. Still, it's got me touched. Don't worry, Alcar. I won't mention you. And even if they do try to give you trouble for it, they will have me to get through first. I messed up that sentence, but you know what I meant, honey. Alcar's jar... Jar... Alcar's jaw drops. He stares at me like I've just said something outlandish before the moment passes and he takes a step back. A bark of a laugh bubbling out of him. Oh, that's an H. They will! What do you mean that's rich? They, ha they will have me to deal with, you jerk. I glare at him and he grins right back, but not an ounce of humility. Richer than you, that's for sure. What are you, twelve? Shut up. You're the one who says laters. Right on your level, then, isn't it? The grin widens, his canines bared sharp and large, and in genuine amusement, Alcar surveys me for a moment with arms still crossed. There is something else to his gaze now. After a moment, he laughs again, but averts his eyes. I don't miss that. Nor do I miss the blush. Aww. Nor the fact that he can't seem to stop grinning. You got a fucking diet, Hunter. He wants to pretend like I'm lying, but I'm being serious. Seems your type. He rolls his eyes, looking none too upset. He leans closer suddenly, lowering his voice despite the empty tavern. I don't know, know how much or how little you've decided to trust the powder wig pomps in that workplace. Fuck. And that workplace of yours. He pauses, looking pained. And I said all that about not trusting anyone I know, but just listen to me. This wants. Take that to Ezra, not your superior. Okay, yeah, hell yeah, we're going to Ezra. He regards me with beseeching. He regards with me beseeching intensity. I fuck that sentence up, I don't care. Eyes flickering it's across okay, my neither face. Neither of us can talk today. Um, like he's looking just for some sort of give, something he can trust. Well, I'll give, I'll give for sure. I don't know if I can give it to him. Alcar's concern, Alcar's concern for his own well-being, I understand. This, this is different. Yet, I have no desire to bother Harry this morning, not after last night, and not over an inconclusive scrap of something that smells strange. August is another mystery altogether. Ezra does have a wonderful little shop full of witchy magic. In a town this small, I can only surmise he would be the one with the most tools at his disposal to suss out an, analy an analysis for something like this. It does make sense to go to him, which is all well and good, because Alcar is beginning to look downright fidgety. Alright, I'll go to Ezra with this. Alcar stares at me for a second longer, like he doesn't know if I was being honest. Eventually, however, his shoulders relax and he takes a step back. Then my job's done. Hope you don't mind me quitting this place. A tavern's no fun when there's nobody to pick a fight with. He drops into a mocking, half-assed bow, his tail swishing, and then all but squeezes himself out the door right past me before I can so much as frown. I stare where Algar had already vanished and wonder for a moment if I should chase him down, but then forget it. He's no hunter, and I have a feeling, not entirely natural, that the things out there that the thing out there isn't interested in lichens, witches, demons, or vampires. It's nothing to do with the killing pattern, it's Sighing, I took my coat more tightly around myself and reluctantly make to follow his path. Breakfast will have to wait, but I'm hungry. Hey! The shop is empty when I arrive. That comforting tinkle of the bell that sits above the door welcoming me. Ezra's nowhere to be seen, but I do spot a small white cat curled up at the foot of the shop counter. That's new. A curious creature, one that gives off the same soothing, magical aura as her owner, if I'm to make, an as if I'm to make assumptions. The purple curtain that separates the shop and living quarters twitches, and Ezra emerges, clutching a cup of steaming tea. Aww. Sarah, I'm so relieved to see that you're alright. You look so cute, you little shirt. <laughs> the cat's ears twitch at the sound of his voice, and her eyes glow a vivid aquamarine as they lazily open. She stretches, sauntering over to him and parading herself in between his legs. Yep, that's a cat. He ignores her, moving to place his tea upon the counter. 
I added that you had to depart the festival quite abruptly. We were all worried for you. Aww. I nod politely, offering him a clipped smile. I did, unfortunately. Well, I do hope you've had enough rest. You look ever so tired. Not that I'm surprised after an inve inevitably late evening. Would you like some tea? I'd love some tea. Can I have some tea? The sash feels heavy in my coat, and as much as I enjoy exchanging pleasantries with the witch, I'm here for a reason. I actually need your help with something quite urgent. You do? What is it? Both the cat and Ezra watch me intently as I retrieve the sash, the violet bloodied fabric unfurling as I hold it up. The cat hisses. Her hackles raised as she darts into the back room with little hesitation. Oh, that cat knows. The cat's like, that shit ain't normal. That paired with the look on Ezra's face unnerves me, and I sigh heavily, exasperated as he rushes past me to <laughs> lock the front door. He's like, he's no, like oh boy. No, we're not coming. He's like, oh. Dead bolt and all. You literally just walk in, and he's like, you want tea? And you're like, no, I'm here to cause trouble, and you whip out that sash. <laughs> he faces the door, his palms splayed flat upon the window pane. It glows a pleasant shade of blue as he whispers what I assume to be a ward incantation before he turns to join me. We whipped out something fierce in here. He does not like that shit. Though we're quite clearly alone, his voice is tactfully quiet. What exactly did you get that? Arrow, oh, buddy. The words rush out of him and his aura is panicked, so much so that I begin to feel a terrible sense of unease washing over me. Ezra is the one person I truly had no hesitation about trusting from the start. Someone I thought I could rely on. But here, right now, I find myself questioning his intentions. Could he possibly already know who this belongs to? And if so, how? Alcar found it in the woods last night. He told me to bring it to you, and only you. He runs a hand through his curls, and I notice that it's shaking. Oh boy. Ezra, are you okay? A heavy exhale, and he closes his eyes, shaking his head before he meets what my gaze. What would you do if Ezra was the murderer? I would... Pick up my laptop and throw it out of my window. <laughs> this is bad. This puts us all in danger. All of all of us? That's a lot of people. <laughs> That's a danger. whole lot of people, Ezra. Danger? I don't understand. It's just a sash. I simply hoped you could identify who it belonged to. You're aware of who its owner is, I assume, based on your reaction? I play dumb, expertly disguising my interest in the fact that I know it's not the new victims. I love... He's hiding something, I'll find out. she calls it expertly. She's like, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at I'm this I'm really good at playing thing. dumb. But I also yeah. feel like Ezra's very perceptive, so I'm sure he sees right through it. Yeah, probably. He moves around to the other side of the counter, nervously rearranging a pile of glowing crystals, pushing aside a dish filled with colorful gems. <gasps> Friendship rocks. He's, uh, he spares me a glance as he takes a seat and then forces a smile. I have an inkling, yes. May I? This bitch lying. He holds out his hand, which I observe is now perfectly <laughs> this bitch, steady. Is it truthful? Oh, now we're not shaking? Now we're fine? I'm hesitant to part with the scrap after that little display of uncertainty. This bitch but has he seems tells to have collected lies? his thoughts. Are you sure? He nods, wiggling his fingers impatiently. As sure as I'll ever be. Now, let us get this over with. Oh boy. So, oh, art, 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 art. Ooh. Oh, he looks pretty. He's always pretty. Look at his little freckles. Him got freckles. Him got freckles. His gorgeous seafoam eyes. I love him. Bibby. The Bibby has freckles. As soon as the sash meets really his palm. Him. A bright, emerald light emanates from his fingertips. The fabric hovers mid-air, suspended by vibrant whirls of magic. The movement of Ezra's hands fluid like water as he commands his spell. I watch in awe as a mark forms before him, indecipherable shapes shifting and changing. His eyes are alight, brighter than ever, as the blood that coats the sash seems to pull away from the fabric. Shapeshifter? I hardly his know her. I... Stop interrupting me! <laughs> It's beautiful, a truly impressive display, but I am sure I don't take my eyes off him for even a second. His lips part, brow deeply furrowed as he concentrates. He doesn't look pleased, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what he's doing, but whatever it is, I just hope that it helps. He kind of looks like the meme of the girl with the- Trying to do math? Trying to do math. 
That's our favorite meme. It's a good this, meme. <laughs> this is the first solid piece of evidence I've managed to get my hands on, and I refuse to rest until I get a name. A sharp inhale, and Ezra closes his eyes tight, the magic dissipating, and the sash falls and settles upon the wood. All right, tell me. Give me the bad the, news, Doc. Question. So do you think that when he's doing that spell, like, the sash has to float as part of it? Or do you think like, that's an extra thing he does just because you're watching to impress you? I think he thinks it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like a cool thing. Like he doesn't like, have cool to actor. make the sash float, but he's like, I think this it's will look cool. so much cooler. I know. He drops his head, knuckles tight as he grips the edge of the counter. Who's is it, babe? Hit me with that. I had a... F oh. I had seriously. a feeling, but... Who's is it? Who's is it? Who's is it? Ezra, work with me here. I need you to be honest. Please tell me, please tell me. Please. He looks scared, maybe even a little upset. This is bigger than me, but I cannot in good conscience keep this from you. I'm not sure if he's talking directly to me or if he's reassuring himself. I suspect it's the latter. I try to remain calm, and I truly am unsurprised that yet another person in this town has managed to, revenge from, to refrain from divulging potentially valuable information. I am well good. I don't know what that means nothing to the me. The sash belongs to a girl named Aya Walker. He pushes away from the counter, putting distance between himself and the sash, eyeing it warily. And who exactly is Aya Walker? I really, I, I really shouldn't. I would hate for any harm to come, for, to, come to you. I'm not gonna tell- How are you gonna- Harm's not gonna come to me, just you just tell me who she is. Harm? Who would harm me over something as insignificant- as insignificant as a name? I love when you manage to say exactly what the protagonist is going to say in like- I do too, it happens a lot! <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing increasingly more frustrated as the minutes pass by, and as you can tell. I know he's not stupid, if anything, he's too smart. I suppose he's just looking out for himself, but whatever knowledge he's retaining is clearly valuable, and I must know. I think back to what Omen said only a few nights ago, about Finn visiting less, about Ezra being tired all the time. Is this connected somehow? Boy, if you don't tell me, I'm about to pop you! I cannot That's stop myself from- what you said. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going to hit you. You pricked- I'll protect you, flirt. I- listen. I cannot stop myself from going to him. The way he stares at the sash and the way all colors drains from his freckled cheeks has my heart aching. Ezra, it's okay. I'll never let anything happen to you. I worry more about you. I know that sounds foolish, but... Please, bud. Bud, come on, bud. He wraps his arm around his waist, almost as if he's trying to hold himself together. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. I care for you. I will not be re responsible for you getting hurt. I just- ooh, this is driving me crazy, just tell me the thing. I reach out with a tentative hand, and he steps forward. Without hesitation, I wrap my arms around him. Our bodies seem from shoulder to waist to hip. He buries his face in the crook of my neck, his hands splayed upon my back, fingers curling tight in my clothing. Aw. I hold him until I'm sure that he's not going to fall apart, until I know that he feels safe. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. When I breathe in, my lungs are filled with the sweet scent of vanilla, of clean cotton. I- Thank you. I needed that, apparently. Ah, just a little baby. We reluctantly part, and I register the way his cheeks have darkened, his green eyes bright. Anytime. Now. Bad information, bud. Ezra eventually shifts his weight, his breathing steadier than it had been, and he clears his throat. Okay, okay, here it comes. Oh, yeah. She was a general. A really lovely girl, and relatively new in town after being transferred. Oh, I'm new in town after being transferred. The new girl in town? She was arrested quite suddenly, and no one outside of the enforcers knows why. Ooh. Hunters, especially of a general's rank, are very rarely thrown in the dungeons for minor transgressions. Oh boy. We're too valuable, so... What did she do? I don't know what to do with this information. A young general being thrown into the dungeons is alarming, especially when there's no apparent reason. Treason, murder, unlawful torture? These are all things that I know hunters have been imprisoned for, but never without the public having full knowledge for such events. For such events are not usually quiet ones. We have families, friends, we save lives. There must be something somewhere that tells me why she was stripped of her title and thrown in a cell. I take the sash from the counter and tuck it back inside my coat, and Ezra keeps a close eye on the movement, as if I, as if it may jump out and bite him. Who is her enforcer? Oh god, oh god, oh god, 
Oh god, oh god. Ezra throws me that look again. The one where he looks impossibly sad, reluctant. Yep, Gus. Yep, 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 yes, yeah, yes. Of course, because I don't have enough on my plate already. He quickly scrambles to add to his statement, clearly not wanting me to think ill of August. Only an interim, though. While her transfer was processed, her and Piper hit it off quickly, but she was gone before she had a chance to thrive. I take a step towards the door, and Ezra nervously follows. Where are you going? Um, nowhere. He looks like he wants to reach out and stop me, but he thinks better of it. I'm going to clear my head before... I don't know. I reach to turn the locks, then for the handle, watching his wards shimmer and fade as he reluctantly waves his hand. Something begs at me to pause. Tell me, Ezra, why are you so afraid? A deep breath, then a steady exhale, and Ezra stands tall. Because I'm scared to learn the truth. I am too. Ezra, that's okay. I've only ever been looking for somewhere to settle, somewhere quiet and away from the things that give me nightmares. Mm, poor baby. I found that here. I found love, a family, and yet... Nothing lasts forever? He shakes his head. Everything crumbles eventually. Well, I'm not about to let that happen. That is why I'm afraid. I just want a normal life. I know, honey. We stare each other down for a lingering moment, and I truly feel sorry for him, for everyone in this town. And I gather that associating yourself with creatures doesn't grant you much peace. It does not. I drop my head, my mind swimming. People are dying, being thrown in dungeons. I've got your back, Ezra, just, just as long as you have mine. I... Thank you. Just stay safe. We need you. So did I replace her? I think I might have... No, you replaced Piper, right? Yeah, but still. They're like, it's like a... No, she was just placed with, with August and Interim. He had both. They had oh. both, um... Piper and Piper I at and the time because they were waiting to get Aya stuff finalized. 